This is KGW News at Noon. And now at noon, we're tracking two big stories today. Snow across the Portland Metro has created slick road conditions and a slew of crashes during the morning commute. We're also following sad news about Oregon Secretary of State Dennis Richardson. He died last night following a battle with cancer. I'm Chris Willis. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. We have a crew in Salem with reaction from lawmakers on Richardson's death. But first, let's get to our storm team coverage. KGW's Tim Gordon starts our coverage live in Lake Oswego. Tim places just south of Portland getting hit pretty hard. Yeah, Chris, you know, the snow started late last night and it's still with us. Check out the front of our view here. Drive eight. Uh, this is Wembley Park Road uh, near Lake Oswego High School Middle School. It is snow covered, still slick, and this snow started causing problems driving very early on. Here's the ODOT camera from Nyberg Road looking down on the northbound lanes of I-5. Ice and gridlock at 3 a.m. Semi trucks lost traction and blocked the road. We drove by and found one crashed into the center median. ODOT said it used de-icer several times and we did see their trucks, but it took a lot to loosen this up. Down in this area of I-5 and 205, it was a miserable pre-dawn commute. All I know is that I was slipping and I didn't like it. At about seven, we came upon this crash on Rosemont in West Lynn. Marilyn Ellis landed upside down off the road in her Chevy Tahoe. She slid down the hill, nearly hitting a telephone pole first. I wasn't in drive, I was in first. Yeah. And then I thought, uh-oh, I better get it in second or third. And when I put it in third, it just lost. Wow. Yeah. I wanted to go slower, but I should have just left it alone. Marilyn's okay and thankful for a man named Bryce who rescued her. And he lives up the hill and I thank you, he's a savior. And I appreciate very much that he, he went all the way in the back seat because we couldn't open the doors. On roads all over the area, snow's packed down and glazed over, a challenge for drivers. I would suggest they stay home. Yeah. 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 That's stay simple. Home. That's it. That's exactly what the Winehouse kids did. Six-year-old Caitlin and three-and-a-half-year-old Charlie discussing the merits of sugar-sprinkled snow. Do you like sprinkled snow? <laughs> How do you know what it tastes like if you haven't tried it? Mom Jessica is glad to be with them at their home above 500 feet. We're okay having fun. We haven't had to leave the house. Husband did. He texted me. He said it's slippery out. His normal commute on Rosemont was closed. Yeah, close because of that crash that we showed you in our story on Rosemont. Uh, we're glad Maryland's okay. And the snow's still falling here in Lake Oswego. The temperature reads 33 for us, so at least it's not too icy right now. But yeah, it's still coming down. And by the way, a lot of people are taking TriMet today, which has been running well for the most part. But there are some canceled routes and detours. Just a few of them you'll want to definitely check before you go. Chris, back to you. All right, Tim Gordon in Drive 8. Thank you, Tim. Meantime, drivers in Forest Grove are also dealing with icy road conditions. This car ended up on its side following a crash on Fern Hill Road. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but first responders say it is another good reminder to drive slowly. Let's get the meteorologist Rod Hill now. Rod, we've been seeing snow showers all morning. Mm -hmm. How about the temperatures though? How they look right now? They are slowly nudging up and I'm going to show those to you, Chris, uh, but there's positive news in that department. Here's uh, what's left for the time being of the snow. Uh, Tim was down in Lake Oswego. They're still getting some flurries, but there's not much back to your west. All this is kind of moving north and pushing off to the east. And even uh, out um, near 205 and areas east out toward Powell in the Gresham area, I've been checking and the cameras out that way show none of the snow is sticking on the ground, maybe some grass and that's about it. Still, it's a very dark looking sky over downtown Portland, 34 degrees right now from the Wells Fargo building. And here are those temperatures. So 35 in downtown, West Lynn now up to 34, Battleground, Vancouver 34. It's snowing in Gresham, 32, but the cameras I'm looking at, again, when I'm out around Powell, not showing the snow is sticking. And then right now we have dry conditions, 33 in Beaverton and 33 in Hillsborough. Not much above freezing, but with icy roads, every degree counts, right? 34 in Salem and 34 degrees in Kaiser. So for this afternoon, temperatures slowly nudge, at least mid-30s maybe upper 30s. We could be 38, for example, at 4 p.m., but then getting back down close to freezing quickly once the sun goes down. And remember, we still have more snow showers coming in overnight tonight. 
what that could mean for your Thursday morning coming up on my complete forecast. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. As if those driving conditions aren't bad enough, thousands are still without power this noon in the Montevilla neighborhood of Southeast and Northeast Portland. Businesses there unable to open many residents without heat as they wait for the power just to come back on. More now live from KGW's Keeley Chalmers along East Burnside and 82nd. Keeley, we can see the traffic lights behind you are out. Yeah, they are out and they have been since shortly after four o'clock this morning. That's when a Pacific Power transformer in the area blew. At one point, more than 4,500 customers were without power out here. Now, crews have slowly but surely been restoring power to chunks of the area, but they say they likely won't have all the power restored until about 3 o'clock this afternoon, which means a lot of folks still waiting for their lights and their heat to come back on. I don't know. The sunny market on Southeast 82nd, one of hundreds of businesses left in the dark this morning. Without power to the store's freezers, owner Boon Jung worried how long her frozen food would last. As of 8 this morning, all was okay. Not too bad. You get up and you go to think you're going to make tea in the dark, and you're like, I can't even make tea. But as the morning went on, many in the Montevilla neighborhood started feeling the effects of having no electricity. We found Neil Whitaker walking his dog outside because he said inside wasn't that much warmer. Our condo's probably 45 degrees right now. <laughs> Can't quite see our breath in it yet, but it's drop, you know, it's dropping, dropping, dropping. Our heat is not working right now. Our stove is electric and all that, so uh, I think it's pretty bleak. Unable to cook any food at home, Cal Angus went out looking for open restaurants this morning with little luck. It looks like this whole side is out. I've just been uh, sweeping in the dark, uh, getting deliveries. Inside Redwood Restaurant on Southeast Stark, owner Susie Blue prepared for her morning brunch. Boiling some potatoes uh, to make hash browns. In the dark. Luckily, her stove runs on natural gas. I have the ovens on to try to generate a little bit of heat and uh, had some stuff in the oven and boiled some water so I can make some coffee. And just trying to hang tight until the power comes back on. Pacific Power initially said the power would be back on by 10 o'clock this morning, but 10 came and went, and many were still left with no electricity. It's incredibly frustrating. Waiting and hoping their lights come back on and they can get back to business. Every shift we depend on the income from that, so it gets, it gets a little tight. Yeah, Portland police remind drivers when they come to an intersection like this one with the traffic signal out to treat it as a four-way stop. And with the snow still coming down and the temperature still very, very chilly, it's more important than ever to be cautious out here on the roadways. They could be slick. Now, Pacific Power is still investigating the cause of this power outage, but it says it was likely weather-related. Back to you. All right, Keeley Chalmers live. Thank you, Keeley. And here's what it looked like in Salem overnight. You can see flakes falling and the roads pretty much covered with a thin layer of snow. It didn't stop people from getting out, but the cars and trucks were going pretty slow. Look at them there with their hazard lights flashing. Snow plows were also spotted driving around and getting ready to clear the roads. A lot of you are sharing your snow photos with us. Here are a few we're going to share with you. Shani sent this one in from Redmond, says this is what a real snow day looks like. Three feet and counting. Not everyone excited about the snow, though, but this dog definitely is. Margo says that feeling when you are an Alaskan Malamute and you wake up to snow. <laughs> excited. This might have to be our favorite photo, though. That's Petunia the pig all bundled up for the snow. You can share your pictures with us always by using the hashtag MyKGW. And you can stay up to date on the forecast and the winter warnings by downloading our KGW Portland weather app. It's free for all Apple and Android devices. Now to some sad news we told you about at the top of this newscast. Oregon Secretary of State Dennis Richardson passed away at his home last night, surrounded by friends and family. He was 69 years old. Richardson had announced that he had been diagnosed with brain cancer last year. KGW's Kyle Laboshi joins us now with a look back at his life and legacy. And Kyle, Richardson's career in politics spanned nearly 20 years. Indeed, Chris. Richardson rose through the ranks, becoming the first Republican to hold Oregon Secretary of State's office in nearly four decades. Dennis Richardson lived a life of public service. He served his country in Vietnam as a combat helicopter pilot. After settling in Central Point, Oregon, he first got into politics in 2000. 
Three years later, he took office in Salem and served six terms as a state representative. He reached the powerful position of co-chair on the Joint Ways and Means Committee, helping the state out of a budget deficit. This is our time to change the course of our state. That's when Richardson nearly made history. He took on Governor John Kitzhaber in 2014. Richardson only lost by three percentage points. He would have become the first Republican governor since Vicatia in the 1980s. As long as I've done my best, that's all I can do. After the election, Richardson retired from politics, but that break didn't last long. I'm Dennis Richardson. In 2015, he decided to run for Secretary of State. That's an important position because it focuses on making sure that we audit the agencies, make sure that we know where the public money is being spent. Uh, I don't need to be governor to accomplish the goals that I set out during our campaign. In a bruising campaign, he beat Democrat Brad Avakian. I, Dennis Richardson. Becoming the first Republican Secretary of State in more than 30 years. He promised to use the powers of his office for everyone regardless of their politics. As the Secretary of State, I will be functioning as an Oregonian. And it's my commitment that you will not know whether I have an R or a D behind my name. Then in 2018, Richardson went on Facebook and told Oregonians about his diagnosis of brain cancer. The primary concern is for my current health. And uh, I've worked out uh, today and I've uh, been able to be able to uh, join in the efforts of uh, helping my grandkids. Richardson stepped back from public events and wasn't seen during the 2018 election. Earlier this month, his office announced he was scaling back his work and would spend less time in the office. Richardson was a devoted family man. He enjoyed spending time with his kids and grandkids, especially around the 4th of July when they all got together. Richardson said his best job ever was being a grandpa. He passed away at his home in Central Point Tuesday night, surrounded by family and friends. Oregon Governor Kate Brown has ordered flags at half staff today and on the day of his funeral. Back to you. All right. Sad news, Kyle. Thank you. And Maggie Vespa is live for us in Salem now with reaction to Richardson's death. And Maggie, people were reaching out within an hour of hearing that he'd passed. Oh, Chris, it happened right away. A lot of people wanting to tell us about the late secretary's public service and about his personality. And then, you know, we got down here and on top of all of that, people told us they're really in shock today. They obviously knew the secretary was ill, but they didn't know this day was imminent. A somber day in Salem where flags are lowered and the secretary of state's office is quiet. Staff sat inside too sad for interviews, telling us off camera, Dennis Richardson will be greatly missed. I don't think one is ever ready, so I'm not going to say I was ready for that call. His friends but, and colleagues um, found out hours ago. Well, I got the news about it this morning and uh, was shocked. You know, I think we all knew how serious the situation was. But still, when it happens, it kind of brings you up short. The House GOP leader calling the career public servant a folk hero. It takes a lot for a Republican to be elected to statewide office these days. And he did it. And I think a lot of it had to do with who he was. He was very calculating. He was one uh, person that didn't uh, jump to conclusions. That cool head, perhaps a result, they theorize, of Richardson's time in combat. What he did in Vietnam as a helicopter pilot, that was a very, very dangerous job. And, uh, and he survived, and he came back, and he didn't make a deal out of it. And the real heroes don't make a big deal out of it. And Tales of his so humility, a common thread. He was always concerned about Oregon and, and Oregonians. Legislative leaders and political rivals also paying tribute today. Senate President Peter Courtney writing Richardson, quote, was dedicated to his faith and family, his community and his country. He was dedicated to Oregon. He was a budget hawk. He cared about people. I will miss him. Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum called the secretary the quintessential public servant. At our last lunch, he gave me a coin with his motto engraved on it. Having been given much, what will you give in return? I will treasure it always, she wrote. And Governor Kate Brown writing, quote, regardless of what side of the aisle his colleagues sat on, we all knew Dennis's kind heart guided his career of service to the people of Oregon.
And we have more statements, by the way, on our website. And the governor, for her part, wrapped up her statement by acknowledging that she now has the task of choosing Oregon's next secretary of state because, in large part, we're going to show you this graphic here looking at the line of succession in the gubernator gubernatorial line of succession. The secretary of state is first. After that, it's the state treasurer and so on. And keep in mind, Kate Brown was Secretary of State when then-Governor Kitzhaber resigned in 2015. Governor Brown said she will make her selection in the coming weeks, and per state law, she does have to choose a Republican. Chris, back to you. All right, Maggie, thank you for that. Live from Salem. Meantime, Oregon lawmakers in the nation's capital are also paying their respects on social media. Republican Representative Greg Walden says Richardson was a kind, caring, and thoughtful friend. Democratic Senator Ron Wyden also offering his condolences. Senator Wyden says, I so appreciated standing with him at services of the Oregon Fallen War Heroes Memorial in Central Point, which Dennis's work made possible. We'll continue to follow this sad news of Richardson's death, both on the air and online. You can read more about Richardson on our website at KGW.com.